Hey, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm making salsa. It's a recipe I got from a friend and I've been making it for years now. Everybody really, really loves it, so I'm happy to share it with you. I'm going to start with my clean tomatoes that I have washed, clean everything. It's a little bit cluttered, but I did spray everything with bleach and wipe everything down. Especially since I like to give a lot of my canning stuff away, I like to make sure it's extra clean when I'm making it. And so I'm going to blanch the tomatoes to get the skins off as the first part after washing. So before I blanch them, I'm going to slice an X into the tops and the bottoms. Just makes it easier to get the skin off. Some people like to make salsa with the skin on, but I prefer not to. Alright, I have scored all my tomatoes. I'm going to take a bunch. This is my favorite way to uh, blanch tomatoes anyway. I take a few. I have my lid with boiling water. I'm going to pop them in. Put the lid back on just for maybe a minute. Not very long. We're not cooking them. We're just blanching them so the skin comes off. It's super easy. While we're waiting for that, I will show you what else I have. This is my giant pot of water that I've started boiling because it takes a really long time to come to a boil. So this is my pan for putting my tomatoes in and back here we have these sitting, getting warm. And in the oven are the jars keeping warm at about 250 while I wait for everything so that you always want to put warm hot liquid into a hot jar otherwise it may shatter. So don't know if you can see the skin peeling off. Hold it up. Uh, the skin's already peeling off. So I'm just going to pop them in here and I'm going to continue for all the rest until they are all done. Alrighty, while I wait for my tomatoes to cool, I am going to cut up the peppers, onions, and uh, you chop them by hand. I prefer to use a food processor because I'm that lazy. I don't actually enjoy chopping that much. So I like heat, so I am going to just leave the seeds in. And I have here so about two, four, six, eight, about ten or eleven peppers. Usually I do about eight, but these are little, and you, know, you wouldn't want to have a bland salsa. All right, now I'm just cutting up the peppers. I'm going to do the best to get the seeds out of these. But it doesn't matter if there's a couple floating about. Here's a neat way to pepper that I've learned. Just kind of go like this. And now the onions. Usually my recipe calls for two onions, but I bought the giant bag of onions and they're very small. So I'm putting four in, which I think would equal probably two large ones from my estimation and I'm also going to toss two cloves of garlic into this as well. Mm. Oof. Kind of hard. This is garlic I got cheap at the grocery store so it's kind of hard to get out of everything. It doesn't come out of anything very easily. I think I might try planting garlic this year. The peppers were locally grown and the tomatoes were locally grown. And <laughs> dump the veggies in the pot. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about what's left behind because I'm going to do the tomatoes in here that will clean out the rest of these lovely peppers. Alright, to the pan with the chopped up veggies, one tablespoon of coarse salt, three quarters of a cup of apple cider vinegar, 
one quarter cup of brown sugar. We're gonna do two teaspoons of paprika. And here's a little tip that I like for using tomato paste. We're gonna use one can of tomato paste. Is you open both sides of it, you take this side off, and then you just push it through. It comes out beautifully. The little can is empty. And now we're still waiting for the tomatoes, which I have yet to peel and toss in. Which we will get to in just a second. And here's a fun tip for all my Canadian friends that live near cities with Centras when you can't find apple cider vinegar in any grocery store because everyone's canning, Centra seems to have a ton. Alright, now I'm going to squeeze my tomatoes. This is a good time to wear an apron, which I am not. Because your hands are going to get dirty. You're just going to give it a squeeze. It doesn't matter if it's perfect, but see, most of the skin is just going to come right off. I'm not too worried about these little ends, except for maybe in these giant big tomatoes. Now, this tomato was frozen. Because sometimes I throw my tomatoes in the freezer if I know. If I don't need them and I had too many and I did have an abundance of tomatoes. See how easy the skin comes off? And so I'll take my squishy hands. And hold on. We're going to do chop. Alright, now I'm just going to toss these in. It was, I guess I didn't tell you, it's approximately four and a half to five pounds of tomatoes. I weighed the tomatoes, I measured everything else. All right. Hey, we're just going to let this simmer for approximately one hour or until you have reached the consistency of salsa that you prefer. That. If you like it thicker, boil it longer. Right. So the salsa has been boiling about an hour and I am now going to push this over the jars I have just taken out of the oven and I'm going to fill them. This also looks a little bit runny -er than I would normally like, but that's also fine because you can, if it's too loose or too wet, you can always uh, boil it when you open it or strain it. But wet salsa is okay. It's good for that's good for everything really. I did not use Roma tomatoes fully, so that makes a difference in how much liquid is in the salsa. Roma tomatoes are pastier, have less water, and these were a mix of Roma tomatoes and just whatever grew in people's gardens. So normally I get about five jars of salsa. We're gonna get a little bit more. So I have this one jar which I did not sterilize. It will just go right into my fridge. I'm not going to hot water bath it just because the jar most likely won't be full enough to hot water bath anyway. I'm going to take this damp paper towel and go around the rims. That one's just going into my fridge so that the uh, lid can get a good tight fit because you don't want any residue on the band because then bacteria can grow. And then, uh, these lids have been sitting in hot water for a while so that the rubber part is soft. Do this. And then the screw bands we're going to do finger tight.
And then I'm going to put them in a hot water bath for 15 minutes according to, uh, for me, being in Canada, the Bernardin Book of Canning where salsas are 15 minutes. This is not a Bernardin recipe. Pop them in here. Um, I know that some people do not do a hot water bath for salsa or lots of stuff, but I like to do safe canning. And this is a low acid food, doesn't need a pressure canner. You need to have about half an inch or an inch of water on top of the lid, so when we drop this in, we're going to put the lid on. And we're going to, when it comes to a boil, I will then set the timer for 15 minutes. So the water was boiling when I took the lid off the pot to begin with. When I put the jars in, the temperature dropped, it stopped boiling. I am going to bring it back to a boil and then set my timer for 15 minutes. Ready? My timer went. I'm taking these out of the canner. I'm going to lift them up. Try not to tip them at all. There are very scientific reasons for why you water boil, water bath. Oh, did you hear that pop? Yeah. That was the seal. Oh, there we go. That's that beautiful sound. And there it goes again. Uh, yeah, anyway, the reason for water baths, it's very scientific. The amount of time has to do with the temperature inside the jar and the temperature of everything inside the jar to kill bacteria and germs so that your products stay safely, stay, stay safely inside the jars without having bacteria growth. You can see it's still boiling. So we're gonna let these sit undisturbed for about till tomorrow. And then I'll take the screw bands off and store them with the screw bands off. The reason for storing the screw bands off is if they were to spoil, it would break the seal and you would know it. Um, for more information on safe canning practices, you could look up bernardin.ca or Jars. Bowl canning, I think it's safepreserving.com, I'm not sure. But if you Google ball jars canning, you'll they'll give you the American version. And you can you can look it up. Some people don't like to water bath because it takes too much time, but I mean it's your health and your life, so safety first. <laughs> Just water bath. It takes an extra maybe 20, 30 minutes of your time. <laughs> it's, in my opinion, it's worth the extra time just to make sure you don't kill yourself or somebody you've gifted your stuff to. Just small things. Thanks for watching.